Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can list a sample space and also do an example of a probability question where you have to read some numbers off the table. All right, there are several ways that you can list a sample space. For example, you can just go ahead and list them all, hopefully getting all of the events, or you can try to list it in a systematic way. So this first method I'm going to show you is to use a table. So in the example, find the sample space for the sum of rolling two dice by drawing a table. So here we are going to do a sums chart. So I'm going to put the plus sign in the corner. And basically, I'm just going to add all the numbers um, from the left side to the numbers on the top. So we have 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4 and so on. So you go ahead and you can pause the video and you can list uh, the sample space for this chart. All right, so I've listed the entire sample space for the sum of two dice, uh, specifically six-sided die. Now we can see that there's six by six. There are 36 possible outcomes in the sample space. Now you might say, well, some of them are identical. For example, we have six, 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 and six here. However, here we have five plus one, but then we have one plus five, which are different. You can think of them being different, for example, if we use two different color dice. So let's say one is red and the other one is blue. So if the red one shows up five and the blue one shows up one, that is different from the red being one and then the blue one being five. So that's why there are 36 possible outcomes in this sample space. Another way to list the sample space is by drawing a tree diagram. So for example, let's find the sample space of having two children, uh, whether they're boy or girl, by drawing a tree diagram. So for example, if we have child one, child one can either be a boy or a girl. And then child two, we're going to list it as our second uh, child. If the first one is a boy, then we're going to branch off here with two branches as well. The second one will either be a boy or a girl as well. If the first one's a girl, then we can also branch off with two branches and have a boy or a girl. So the sample space um, or listing the two children, so we'll call it S for sample space, is we can have B, B, boy, boy, or we can have the older one being a boy and the younger one being a girl, or we can have the older one being a girl and the younger being a boy, or we can have two girls, so G and G. So in this example, there are four possible outcomes. All right, lastly, let's take a look at an example uh, with some numbers filled in and we're gonna answer some probability questions. So this table summarizes the responses to the question, do you bring your cell phone to school? So here on the left, we have grade eight and nine, and then we have some totals, um, one, 10 and 10, according to whether they, yes, they bring their phone or no, they don't. And we also have the totals for the grade eight and the grade nine. So the first question is, what is the probability that a person in the survey is in grade nine? So if you look across the table, there are 55 grade nines out of a total of 120 people. And if you know, we can reduce this, dividing the top and bottom by five, and we get 11 out of 24. All right, so using the same chart, what is the probability that a person in the survey brings their cell phone to school? So the number of people who bring their cell phone to school, we can actually look at the total, there are 110 of them. So that would be 110, and again, out of a total of 120, and we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 10, and we get 11 out of 12. All right, next, 
what's the probability that a person in the survey is in grade eight and does not bring their cell phone to school? So being in grade eight and not bringing their cell phone, we can see that there are six people. So this would be six out of 120. We can divide numerator and denominator by six to get one out of 20. All right, the next one, uh, what is the probability the person in the survey is in grade nine and they bring their cell phone to school. So grade nine, bring the cell phone to school. There are 51 of them. So it's gonna be 51 divided by 120. And since 51 is divisible by three, we know that because five plus one is six and six is divisible by three. 51 divided by three is 17. And then 120 divided by three is 40. All right, the last question is not a numerical question, but what assumption is made in this survey question? So when you're asking the question uh, to the students about whether they're bringing their cell phone or not, we're gonna assume that they have a cell phone so that they can respond yes, that they are bringing to school, or no, they are not. So assume the students all have a phone. Now, some people might want to say, we have to also assume that they are honest about bringing their phone in. We can say that as well, but whenever we do any survey question, we have to hope that people are being honest. So we're going to stick with the one assumption that uh, we assume that the students have a phone. 